Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3C of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 81 and the question is number 6. It reads, a particle is projected with speed 7 or 5 meters per second at an angle tan inverse 2 to the horizontal, up the line of greatest slope of an inclined plane at angle tan inverse 1 half. Show that the time is taken for the particle to reach its greatest perpendicular height above the horizontal and above the plane are at a ratio of 4 is to 3. So, the subtlety in this question is that we're being asked to find the greatest height, first of all, above the xy plane, and secondly, above the x prime y prime plane. Or you could say above the horizontal and above the incline. So, for example, if this is my xy plane, and in red, I'm going to draw my particle. Like so. And if I draw another plane, which is the incline, like this, in black, now the greatest height reached above the horizontal might be here, and above the the, the actual plane might be here, and they're not the same point. All right. So basically, we're, asked, we're being asked to uh, calculate the two heights and then compare them. So we'll start by doing the, the horizontal first. So let's just draw the plane. So we have our x, one sec there now. We have our, a, our y first, our x, and we have, I'm going to call it unit vectors here, i hat, unit vector j hat, and we have our particle, so I'm going to draw the particle now. Too many, I'm getting confused here with my with my virals. But anyway, here is my unit, my u, 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 initial velocity vector u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. All right. So I'm going to call this angle here alpha. So alpha is against the horizontal. Now we need to resolve the 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 vector u to its component unit vectors, so we need to find the two vectors which when added together create that vector and they must be parallel to the x and y axes or the i hat and j unit vectors. So this one's parallel to the i, this one's parallel to the j, this is u sub y, this is u sub x. So to resolve them we're going to get u cosine of alpha, this is equal to u sine of alpha. Now we're given an equation that tan inverse 2 is equal to alpha. Alright, so if we just sketch this, tan is opposite over, over adjacent, so it's going to be 2 over 1. This is going to be square root 5 here. And by using Sakatoa, you'll find that sine is 2 over root 5, and cosine is 1 over root 5, and tan, of course, is 2. So let's just use that fact, and also use the fact that we're given that u is equal to 7 root 5. So we have the cosine I said was 1 over root 5. So therefore we get that u sub x is equal to 7 i hat. And this here is equal to 7 root 5 times 2 over root 5 is equal to 14 j hat. Therefore u is equal to 7 i hat plus 14 j hat. Alright? That makes perfect sense. 7 i hat plus 14 j hat. And that is correct. Now the next thing we need to do is find the time at, well actually you know, the next thing we need to do is resolve gravity. Now of course we're back to a situation where we're dealing with gravity but only in the xy plane and as a result we don't need to resolve it because it's already resolved. And just, just to confirm why that is, gravity acts in the negative y direction like so. So we, if we're only using the x and y axes that means it's acting only in the y Therefore, it is already resolved. It isn't acting in two. It isn't acting in two directions. So I don't need my or my sketch anymore. So we're going to go x, y, u vast, like that. Put in what we know. We knew this was seven. This is fourteen. This is g, and this is zero. Of course, g is equal to minus 9.81, or not, plus. Then we know t is equal to t, like so. So we're asked to find the time at which it is at its maximum height. 
So the maximum height is given at which at the time of which v sub y, the speed in the y direction, or the, well, the velocity vector in the y direction, is equal to zero, because it's obviously after stopping. So v is equal to u plus at, so this turns out to be 14 plus gt. So if we get v sub y equal to zero is equal to 14 plus gt, therefore t is equal to negative 14 over g is equal to negative 14 over negative 9.81 and that's equal to something which we'll find out now 1.42 that's correct alright so we have 1.42 seconds so we know that after 1.42 seconds the particle has reached its maximum height above the xy plane so the next thing we need to do is find that height s sub y so s sub y is ut plus a half at squared, so 14t plus g over 2t squared. So s sub y is equal to 14 times 1.42 minus 4.9, and that's g over 2, times 1.42 squared. So I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. 19.9 minus 9.8 giving an answer of 10.01 meters alright now I just have an answer here just let me have a chance to have a look at it Yeah, we're good, we're good to go there, All right? We're good to go. So, yeah, 10.5. We'll say 10.01, I think it is, yeah. So, yeah, it, that, that's, that's pretty good. I'm happy enough with that. All right? So, next thing we're going to do is work out the X prime, Y prime plane, or the inclined plane. So, let's draw this. So, we're going to draw it black again. So, we have Y, we have X. I'm going to draw my unit vectors this way, parallel to the x prime, y prime plane. I'm going to draw my inclined plane, calling it x prime. Call it the x prime axis. I'm going to draw the y prime axis, like so. We know it's inclined at an angle tan inverse a half. I'm going to call this angle here beta like so. I'm going to draw the velocity vector and u is equal to u sub x i hat and u sub y j hat as normal but we're given we're given of course the angle alpha here. Alright so what I'm going to tell you is the way I'm going to do this instead of saying that this ve the vector here is in the the angle between the velocity vector and the plane instead of saying that's alpha minus beta I'm going to say that gamma is equal to alpha minus beta. Just it's just easier to deal with, you know, in terms of the algebra. So I'm going to call this this vector or this excuse me angle here, gamma. All right, you can call it anything you want. You can call it a if you like. It makes no difference. So we need to resolve this uh, velocity vector, and that's going to be quite simple. So it just turns out to be u is equal to u uh, times the cos of gamma i hat plus u times the sine of gamma j hat for the same reasons we did in the last part. So the next thing we need to do is work out this, this angle here. We're told that tan beta, tan inverse beta, um, excuse me, tan inverse of a half is equal to beta. So if we were to sketch this, so it's half like so. Alright, so I'm just going to just take note of this down here. Now we need to find out what 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 gamma is equal to. All right, so let's just do that. So if we we know that the uh, let's find out what that angle is. So we go shift tan for tan inverse one divided by two and close it off, and we get twenty six degrees. Now alpha was equal to tan inverse of, of two. So shift tan for tan inverse two is equal to sixty three degrees. Oh, that's thirty six. Excuse me. 63 degrees. 
Therefore, gamma is equal to alpha minus beta. That's equal to 37.4. All right, so gamma is equal to 37 degrees. And that, that, that's pretty good, so let's we'll take note of that. That means that u becomes the following. It's, it's, it becomes 7 root 5 times the cos of 37 plus 7 root 5 times the sine of 37. That's j hat. This is i hat like so. Let's plug those into the calculator. This here is 12.4 i hat plus 9.41 j hat. So I'm just going to take note of this down here. Alright, so that's our velocity of vector resolved. So the next thing we need to do is resolve our gravity vector. Let's get rid of the piece that we don't need anymore. All right, so this is nothing we haven't done before. We know, of course, that the gravity vector acts in the negative y direction. So in order to resolve it, we need to draw a line parallel to the y prime plane first, and then when we can the x prime plane. They're at right angles. They must be in these directions in order to add together, in order to make the vector g. This is g sub y. This is the vector g sub x. Therefore, g sub y is equal to g times now the angle because this would say angle here intersects this one at right angles their angles are the same I've discussed that in the past so this would become g cos beta j hat and g sub x is equal to g sine beta i hat all right because look this this vector is opposite of b and that's in the i hat unit vector direction so we're going to get uh, what are we going to get? The cos of beta was equal to 2 over root 5, so it's going to be minus 9.81 times 2 over root 5. And this is minus 9.81 times 1 over root 5. Okay, so just give me a moment, I'll plug these into my calculator. 2 divided by root 5 is equal to 0.89. I'll spell that by 9.81. I get negative 8.7 and similarly then for the uh, g sub x we're going to get negative 4.38 now the question is this we have two negative numbers is that is that they are those signs correct and they are because g sub x is going as you look towards uh, towards the left and it the plus is going towards the right where, and g sub y, the plus is going upwards, whereas this is going downwards. So both of these should be negative, and that is the case, so we are correct. I'm just going to take note of this here, so just give me a moment. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is our u vast, so I can get rid of my diagram. We don't need that anymore. So we have the x prime, we have the y prime. Like so. The next thing we need to do is tie, put in the, we'll say the quantities that we know. We know this is 12.4. We know this is 9.41. This is negative 8. Point, oh, that's not negative 8.7. This is negative 8.7, and this is negative 4.3. So we need to find the height above the plane. So it's the exact same procedure as the last time. So we're going to say v sub y is equal to zero, and that's equal to that's equal to v is equal to u plus a t, so it's 9.41 minus 8.7 t, therefore t is equal to not minus 9.41 divided by 8.7, giving an answer of 1.08 seconds. All right. So we know that after 1.08 seconds, we've reached a maximum height above the x prime, y prime plane.
So next thing we need to do, of course, is to find out is to find out the uh, the height above the plane. I'm just, I'm just going to check that that answer there. Just bear with me one moment. Just one sec there now. Yeah, we're, we're correct with that. So S sub y, S sub y is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So it's 9.41t minus 8.7 over 2 times, uh, we'll say t squared. So that equals 9.41 times 1.08 minus 8.7 over 2 times 1.08 to be squared. Alright, so let's just plug that into the calculator. So we get 9.41 multiplied wrong, well, yeah, multiplied by 1.08, giving an answer of 10.16. And we take away from that 8.7. Divided by 2 multiplied by 1.08 to be squared get an answer of 5.07 and that equals 5.08 that's S sub Y alright I'm just going to check that there just one moment Okay, so yeah, we're, we're okay so far, so 5.08. Now, just let me read the question again. Show that the times are, uh, show that the times are in a ratio of 4 to 3. So, by the way, just this distance here was 5.08 meters. And we, sh we noticed a moment ago that the distance was, uh, was approximately 10 meters. So, of course, the two, the two distances are not the same. As in, this is our X prime, uh, XY plane. The maximum height here was approximately 10 meters. And when we have our, if when we have our inclined plane, the height is actually approximately five meters. That's the maximum height. So they're pretty good. Now the last thing we need to do is compare the times at which they're at these heights. So uh, S, I would say sorry, T for the um, for uh, incline is equal to 1.08, and T for for horizontal uh, is. I, I just need to find out what T horizontal is again. I, I didn't actually take note of it like I should have. Just bear with me a moment. T horizontal was equal to 14 over 9.8. And that's equal to 1.42. Okay. So if we want one is if we want a ratio that creates 4 is to 3. So you need to be able to divide one by the other. So if we divide 1.42 divided by 1.08, it goes in 1.32 times. So it goes in uh, 1 is to 1.32, and that's the same as 4 is to 3. All right. So I well let, let's let's see let, let's just uh, let's just check it out. Okay. Um, I have a phone ringing here in the background. I'll answer that in a moment. Okay, so let's just see. Let's see. Four is to three. What if we multiply by one by three and the other one by four? So just to just to show it. Okay. So three times this. Three times one point four two is equal to four point two six, and four times one point zero eight is equal to 4.3 again. So they're, well, they're approximately the same. You've got to remember, of course, that we, we're doing, we're, we're rounding off by using, by using decimals. So they're about the exact same. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.